To many Fallout fans, 4 is their least favourite of the series due to the smaller emphasis on role-playing as well as player choice and consequence outside of some stuff in the factions you side with. However, one aspect of the game that people tend to universally agree on is that the shooting and gunplay is by far the most refined in the series, and I tend to agree. Despite this, however, I have yet to have a single video where I actually shoot a firearm in Fallout 4. That changes now though, as today's the day we figure out, can you beat Fallout 4? With only the Gamma Gun. For those that are unaware, the Gamma Gun does not fire bullets, laser or plasma like the majority of guns in the game, but instead fires concentrated bursts of radiation at enemies and as such will kill them when they take enough radiation damage. This is where the main issue comes from as enemies like super mutants or ghouls are either highly resistant or just straight up immune to radiation damage. The real challenge however comes from the fact that the Gamma Gun and its ammo are incredibly rare. This means just being able to use the gun could be a whole issue in and of itself. But that's half the fun isn't it? Watching me suffer. I should also mention I won't be using either of the legendary variants of the Gamma Gun you can get from the Jack Cabot questline. From personal experience of using them they are a lot more powerful than the base model and I kind of just want to stick with it for this video. Regardless, with all that out of the way, let's begin. In my last Fallout 4 run I asked you guys if it would be okay to start from the vault exit as all the pre-war stuff is the same every time no matter what and I've proven in a few videos by now that it's pretty easy to get out of Vault 111 without killing the roaches. The majority of you said that it should be fine so that's what I'm going to do for most Folly 4 videos from now on. When assigning my special stats I focus mainly on intelligence and endurance and then make sure to have 5 points in perception and then put the last 2 points in luck. I'm aware this is a bit of a stranger build than usual so I'll go a bit more in depth. The reason I have chosen these is because I need 9 in intelligence to get the nuclear physicist perk to increase my damage with radiation weapons as well as having access to the science perk for modding the gamma gun later. That said, you do need the third point of the science perk to actually be able to do anything to the gun, which in turn you need to be level 28 to get, so the chances of that happening are pretty slim. Perception is at 5 for the demolitions expert perk as it also increases damage to the gamma gun. I don't know why it does, but that's what the wiki says. Endurance is as high as it is mainly for health reasons, but also for the rab resistance perk just in case. And finally, the last two points are in luck for the bloody mess perk as it is a flat increase to damage. Enough about my skills though, it's time to actually try and find this elusive weapon. Okay, so from what I understand there are three places I can think of to get this gun, and they are Kingsport Lighthouse, the Decayed Reactor Site, or the Creator of Adam. Well, the Children of Adam at the Lighthouse are hostile when you approach and I don't have the sneak skill to get close enough to try and pickpocket one, so that's a bust. The Creator of Adam is probably the safest place to get one, but it also requires me to try and steal it as they don't have any of them just lying around sadly. That just leaves the reactor site which has a corpse that has the gamma gun on it. The two biggest issues however are just like the crater it is in the glowing sea and probably more importantly there's a death claw right next to the corpse. Well the reactor site is the only one I believe I'm capable of getting so it looks like that's where I'm heading. That said I'm not about to head straight into the glowing sea completely unprepared so I begin heading towards diamond city to see about getting some supplies. I took a somewhat different route there for once, a more dangerous one at that for some reason. It took me past some gunners as well as my old irradiated neighbours, but the real issue was the super mutants that would have very nearly killed me if I hadn't been hoarding food like I was about to hibernate for the winter. Speaking of the mutants, they actually proved to be useful when they gunned down one of the Diamond City guards, allowing me to grab his armour for some much needed protection. From here I spoke to Piper to get in and then headed straight for the clinics so I could sell a bunch of the useless items I picked up and was about to buy some Radaway or Radex when I had an epiphany and decided to go check Fallon's basement and as luck would have it, Becky was selling a hazmat suit and better yet, it was within my price range. With the hazmat suit I was as prepared as I possibly could be and began heading southwest towards my death. The path to the glowing sea was pretty safe for once, which is a pleasant surprise. Once there however I run into all sorts of creatures, mainly this rad scorpion who just refused to leave me alone no matter how far I ran. This turned out to be a blessing in disguise however, because as I reached the decayed reactor site and sprinted towards the dead child of Adam, the nearby death claw ended up aggroing on the scorpion instead of me. Probably because I am literally not even worth the effort. Not that I'm complaining though as it made escaping with my prize so much easier than I thought it was going to be. Rather than fast travel out of the glowing sea like a sane person, I instead headed east for the creator of Adam as brother Ogden there is one of the few people I can think of who constantly sells gamma rounds, so he's probably going to be pretty crucial to the success of this run. When I start to barter with him I begin to realise that these rounds aren't cheap, as there are 30 caps apiece and as such I can only afford 10 of them. But that's alright, I have a plan to make money. Any of y'all seen Breaking Bad? Arriving in the Colonial Tap House in Diamond City I patiently wait for Henry and Paul to be finished with their personal scuffle before approaching Paul and agreeing to help him scare Henry. After all what scares people more than a highly concentrated blast of radiation straight into their skull. Now it's off to go get some drugs. Well I die the first time because I completely forgot to change out of the hazmat suit. Next time things go much smoother, in fact I'm kind of blown away by how effective the gun is, I suppose it makes sense given the rarity of the ammo after all, it even rips through the supposedly resistant ghoul woman in seconds. 
After I turn her rad dial into overdrive and she stops living, I go over and steal all 60 of the drugs. That's right, I said 60. Thanks to all of you, I learned there's an extra crate behind the five you can see from the front. Honestly, didn't know about that. Anyway, I take my rewards and then begin selling them to any and all merchants who'll take them, and then get a sizable amount of caps and head back to the crater of Adam to start buying more ammo. This gives me just enough that I can comfortably clear out the raiders inside the Museum of Freedom so I can save Preston and the Minutemen. Problem is, once again after only taking down a small group of enemies, I'm back to almost no ammo. So, once I'm outside, I fast travel back to Sanctuary and begin crafting a random assortment of items so that I can get just enough XP to level up and get the second rank in the pickpocket perk. I then use my newfound sticky fingers to begin stealing all of the ammo off the Children of Adam at the crater. When I am finished, I now have a crazy 168 rounds for the thing. So here's hoping they get their ammo back over time, as that could make things from here on out much more convenient for me. With my new surplus of ammo, I figure now is as good a time as any to try and fight the Death Claw on Concord. Should have seen that coming. Alright, new plan. With all this ammo, now would be a really great time to go and free Nick from the hands of the mobsters. I also stop off in Hardware Town to not only mix green paint, but also mix the DNA of any raiders I'm fortunate enough to get in my way. On my way to Free Nick, I test out the Gamma Gun on some Super Mutants, and it is about as effective as it was in the Death Club. Well, that tells me one thing at least. I'm definitely not siding with the Brotherhood this time. There is no way I could defeat the mutants at Fort Strong with this thing. So with that, I just sprint my way straight into the station and begin blasting the Triggerman. It goes pretty well. Even the ghouls aren't too much trouble so long as I don't get ganged up on by a bunch of them at a single time. I also learned here that the Gamma Gun actually does do more damage on headshots like any other weapon. I guess I just thought since it was a radiation damage that it would just be universal no matter where you shot them. This knowledge does come in handy in fighting my way back out with Nick. I even managed to explode a few skulls with it. That's one powerful blast of radiation if it can do that. I was smart enough to save a critical for when I fought Skinny Malone, and as such he went down before he had a chance to do anything. The last of his men were also nothing to write home about, surprisingly Darla took the most to take down. After we get outside, I tell Nick that I'll meet him at his office and decide to make a quick detour to the Crater of Adam. This is also where I discover that the children don't replenish their own ammo, so it looks like it's back to only being able to buy rounds from Ogden then. With this in mind, I take that green paint that I made to Abbott and Diamond City so that I can get just enough and level up and take the Cap Collector perk. Makes sense to me if I can only buy ammo from here on out that I may as well get it at a discount. From here, me, Nick and Dogme get Kellogg sent and I go back to Sanctuary to wait a few days so that I can buy more ammo. Before heading to fight Kellogg, I decide I wanted to head towards the lighthouse where the hostile children of Adam are. I thought that maybe I could kill them and take their ammo, but long story short they were taking way too many rounds to put down, so I just loaded back and decided to do the usual sleep a few days, buy ammo, and then rinse and repeat until I was happy with what I had. Now, while my plan was to sprint past all of the sins until I got the Kellogg as I was low on caps and needed as much ammo as I could spare, I found out that the Gamma Gun actually isn't all that bad on sins. The only reason I am bringing this up is because I assumed they'd be about as resilient as super mutants given the fact that they are machines, and I was under the impression that the robots wouldn't be affected at all. So I take out a few sins before getting to Kellogg, and just like Skinny Malone, I made sure to save up a critical in fats, and then followed it up with just a couple more shots, and he went down with a sickness before he even had a chance to use his stealth boys. This got me thinking, what if I took the three stealth boys off of his corpse, and then used them to sneak up on the children of Adam near the lighthouse, and then steal their ammo? Now, despite that being an incredibly big brain move on my part, the sad reality is I have absolutely zero sneak skill, so even with a stealth boy, they spot me before I can even get close enough to have a prompt to steal from them. I didn't end up completely empty handed though, as I went and checked out the crater house up the road that is home to more of these psychopaths, and thanks to the hazmat suit making their attacks literally worthless, I was able to loot the place and got about 30 more rounds for the gun. While I know that doesn't sound like much, let's keep in mind every time the shops refill, I have to spend close to a thousand caps to get that many rounds, so in my eyes, this is like hitting the jackpot. At this point, all there really is to do is head to Good Neighbor and continue the story, so that's exactly what I did. Like everyone, I made sure to shoot Finn as I arrived. You may see this as a waste of ammo, but I don't. He deserves it. I did end up hitting Cleo with one of my shots. She forgave me when I put my weapon away, but let's just say this was the most nerve-wracking dialogue exchange I've ever been in in a Fallout game. Lucky for me, she also seems to sell Gamma rounds, so I get as many as I can from her by selling all the loot I took from Kellogg in a sense, and then once she's done, I go dance my way through Kellogg's brainstem, and then head to go see Virgil. While I technically have saved no time as I went to the Glowing Sea earlier, it still just feels faster to fast travel to the creator of Adam at this point in the story and just walked in within 2 minutes. Before actually heading to deal with the Courser, I figured now would be as good a time as any to go aid the Minutemen and Concord, seeing how by this point the Brotherhood Knights tend to patrol around the area and as such I just let them kill the Deathclaw. I thank them for this by rendering their armour completely useless and then let Preston and the gang know it was safe to head out. Back on track, it's off to Green Tech to find the Courser. Considering the main issue of this run so far has been trying to procure ammo, I decide to just ignore as many of the gunners as I can as I make my way up the building. I do make sure to kill the one halfway up with the missile launcher though. 
Mainly because they have one shot me in here many times before, and also because I can probably sell it for a decent amount of money. When it actually comes time to fight the android, things go far better than I could have expected. He does surprisingly little damage all things considered, and throughout the encounter I am able to keep him stunlocked with a gamma gun so he doesn't have a chance to heal, and just like that, he goes down. With the chip in hand, it's off to the railroad to see about getting the chip decoded. Seeing how I actually haven't murdered them this time, I have to spend a few minutes while Tinker Tom fiddles with his computer until I can get the plans in Virgil, and then see about getting it built. As I have just saved the Minuteman, I figured I'd get Sturgis to help me with the plans. Turns out though, that's not an option until you help Preston with the first settlement, which is £10 bluff. Now, I really do not feel like going to the Corvega assembly plant and wasting ammo on all those raiders, but as it turns out, if you feel the quest, you still get put in charge of the Minutemen, and as such, allowed to proceed with building the device. So, with that in mind, I murder the settlers, feel the quest, and then get started with this contraption. When I come face to face with Father, I think that maybe this is the video where I side with the Institute. Well, let me explain why that is probably not the best idea. After I go around and meet all the leaders, I get sent to bring in the rogue raider synth with X6. Seeing how nothing can go right, when I arrive there's a vertebrate nearby along with some knights, and so, being part of different factions, X6 decides to try and fight them. Considering they are far better equipped than him, he never stood a chance. But, seeing how they were in our way, I tried to deal with them, and let's just say the damage I could do to them was very far less than ideal. So this pretty much made it clear there'd be absolutely no reasonable way for me to fend off the Brotherhood and Institute's final mission, so that idea is out the window. So where does that leave us? As mentioned before, the Brotherhood is also a no-go because they have two different mandatory missions that require me to defeat a large number of suit mutants, and we all know that's not going to work. The Minutemen may be the smartest option, but it could also take forever to get all the aid I need as I probably wouldn't be able to help settlements that had cooler suit mutant problems. But then there's also the railroad. Sure, they still have a few missions where they need to fight the Brotherhood, but nowhere near the number that I would have to fight in the final Institute story mission. Getting to their final mission also probably wouldn't take as long as me trying to get all the settlements for Preston. And plus, I haven't sided with them yet in the challenge either, and variety is the spice of life after all. So with all that in mind, I think it's time to go for a real road ending. Rather than help X6 now, I decided to go help Deacon with the switchboard quest, as that's my ticket into joining the railroad. And I'm honestly not sure how many quests I can do for the Institute before they turn hostile, so I may as well do this now just to be safe. Turns out I may actually be a genius, however, as doing this quest now is a cakewalk because I'm allied with the Institute and none of the synths attack me. Sure, I still have to wait for Deacon to kill them all before I can proceed, but honestly, I'll take a little standing around if it means I get to conserve some ammo. I then take the prototype back to Carrington, and then it's off to Bunker Hill to see about helping Old Man Stockton with the synth problem. And for once, that doesn't involve me destroying toasters. All I have to do is take down a few raiders that are harassing the runaway synth, which is easy enough. Things get a little hairy when two certain mutants decide to come and see what all the commotion was about, but thankfully, one of them was also a suicider, so all it took was one well-placed shot to the arm and vats to solve that issue. From here, actually escorting the synth is fairly straightforward as we have assistance in the form of another railroad agent called High Rise. He doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but he offers us good bait for the raiders while I take them down. Once the synth is safe, it's back to the headquarters once more, where I get the mission to find out who's been helping the synths inside the institute. This quest is quite long and it's mostly just talking until near the end, so I'll keep it brief. Basically, I meet up with a guy named Liam who wants to help the synths, and then he introduces me to Z1, and I'm told about their plan that requires me to get admin credentials for the Code Defender security software. This has me travelling to the Polymer Labs. Once there, I get trapped in a room that I cannot escape from until I've completed a research project. Thing is, this place is filled with feral ghouls, and if I haven't made it clear enough, I literally cannot harm them, and the radiation from my gun will instead just heal them. So, rather than standing around trying to do science while getting zombie slapped every few seconds, I instead run to the end to get the credentials that I need, and then I begin just mashing through logs and files on the computer, until I somehow lifted the override and then just booked it out of there, back to the railroad. Desdemona now informs me that she is changing the plan and we are going to rescue all the sins and not just a few, so when I return to Z1 I tell him that he has to fight for their freedom and he actually agrees and asks me if I can give him some weapons. Seeing how the only weapon I have is my gamma gun, that isn't an option, so when the time comes to fight the guards I'm mostly on my own. At least, that's what I thought, but once there was only one synth left, they just surrounded him with knives and prison shanked him to death. How grim. I then loaded the bodies for gamma money, returned to Z1 to be congratulated, and now it's back to helping Father with his tasks as not to blow my cover, so in other words, it's back to help X6 with the Rogue Raider robot. Thankfully, the vertebrate is gone, so we can begin the quest with no issues this time. The only raider of note to take care of is of course the one with the Fat Man. Sadly, the blast from the gamma gun knocked him off the side of the structure, so I can't take it to sell unless I feel like exploring the ocean floor for 20 minutes. As X6 returns from the fires of hell, he gives me the recall code which I use on the synth and then we and him quickly deal with the other two guards. When I get back to Father, it is now time for the Battle of Bunker Hill. I am of course trying to work with the railroad, so capturing a bunch of synths isn't the best idea. So I return to Desdemona and she tells me to free them and then just kill the courser that is assisting me. 
Well, like every time I do this mission, it's just as simple as walking to the escaped sense. Only difference is, this time the Brotherhood are attacking me, but considering they're also trying to deal with the Institute and Railroad Heavies, they aren't really able to hit me. This courser is even easier to deal with than the mandatory one in the story, so once he's out of the picture, I begin heading out, and as I do, I find a dead Railroad Heavy on the way, and I decide to steal their coat. I then meet with Father, who is somehow still oblivious to the fact I'm actively working against him, and then it's time to head on to Mass Fusion. Seeing how this is going to be a fight against Brotherhood, Sentry Bots and Assaultrons, I decide to do the round and get as much ammo as I can from the vendors. When we get to Mass Fusion, things aren't actually all that bad. Any of the Brotherhood who aren't in power armour go down in one or two shots. And seeing how I just got this new coat, I'm also able to soak up a decent amount of energy damage, so unless they all attack me at once, I am usually able to get out of most encounters with a good amount of my health. When taking the elevator down, I just chose to not fire back and tried my best to avoid taking as much damage as I could. After this quest, I have a few encounters with the Brotherhood where I'll have no choice but to fight, so I'm choosing to save as much of my ammo as possible for them. When we make it to the Agitator, I put the hazmat suit to good use, and for once in my life, don't melt my organs just trying to pick this thing up. Now it was time for the Sentry Bot and the Sultrons. Things are off to a rough start when the Sentry Bot blindsides me at Mach 3, and then I get absolutely destroyed by the Assaultrons. Next try though, and I notice something interesting. Despite what the damage values and vats are telling me, when I actually attack the robots, I am doing far more damage. This may have something to do with the large size of the rays that the Gamma Gun emits, so when I fire it up close it may hit multiple areas at once doing more damage. Honestly, I'm not sure. Not that I'm complaining, as I'm able to do a pretty great amount of damage rather quickly and take down all the robots without having to use anywhere near the amount of ammo I thought I'd have to. With the bots down, it's just a straight shot to the exit and then it's back to Institute to do just a few more odd jobs before I can continue the railroad questline. First task has me clear out a few gunners and then kidnap a scientist. By this point we know two things, that one, the Gamma Gun is very effective on lightly armoured human enemies, and that two, I have very little know-how and charisma, so this goes by pretty quickly as I rinse through the gunners and don't even bother trying to convince Wallace to come peacefully. Before turning in this quest I go and check up on the railroad as it has been a while, and it turns out I have another quest to do for them. Or at least, I think it's one of the main quests? I'm honestly not sure with the railroad. Remember where we took that synth earlier with High Rise? Well, turns out the place has been attacked by the Institute and I have to go help out. I think Glory was meant to accompany me on this mission, but I never saw her, so it was just me this time. Much like before, I'm able to get a jump on the Courser due to him believing I'm on his side, and as such, things go rather smoothly. Turns out I only have to kill the two Coursers, the rest of the attacking sins may as well just not exist in my eyes. With the task well done, other than the numerous dead railroad agents I wasn't fast enough to save, it's back to Father to keep up my cover as I give a speech to the people of the Commonwealth. This then has me going to shove a few objects in the holes before returning once more to power up the reactor. That's good. Gotta have it up and running after all, I'm to blow it sky high later. As soon as things are finished here, I am approached by a synth and told to meet up with Z1, and he tells me the Brotherhood have found the railroad, meaning it is now time for me to fight the Brotherhood, and there is no avoiding it this time. When I head back to the church, all hell breaks loose. And by that, I mean I get decimated almost instantly by the very first Brotherhood Knight who walks in through the back door. To be fair, this first part isn't so bad as I have the aid of almost the entirety of the railroad backing me up, so with a little patience and cover, we manage to whittle the power armor knight down until him and his squad are no more. Here, however, is where things really begin to pick up. It's now up to me to go check on Glory at the entrance, and when we get there, she dies of her wounds. I don't know if this is meant to be like a major death or anything, but one, we barely had any chance to actually get to know her, and two, I have killed her and the rest of the railroad in literally every other playthrough of Fallout 4 I've done up until this point, so seeing this just feels right for me. But with Glory dead, this means it's up to me, and only me for some reason, to clear out the entirety of the church with nothing but this Gamma Gun. I had 128 rounds for the Gamma Gun when this fight started, and it still wasn't enough. Any of the ones not in power armor, as usual, aren't a big deal. Three or four shots at most. But the knights in power armor can take close to 30 rounds before they finally go down. The issue here is unlike the first squad that attacked us, there is a lot more than just one of these Brotherhood Knights. Not to mention the sergeant up in the main area who has even more health because my day wasn't hard enough as is. I was able to take a few of them down, but I was never going to have enough ammo, and as such I ran out with still a few knights to take care of. The only reason the run does not end right here is because despite how dire the situation is for the railroad, I can actually just leave through the front door and as such I'm able to go around all my usual vendors and sell weapons and armour that I looted off of the Brotherhood soldiers that I've managed to kill. With this I was able to get 58 rounds and then, so I wouldn't need to waste money on as many healing supplies, I went back to Concord and grabbed one of those suits of power armour that I stole the fusion cores out of earlier. As ready as I could ever be, I marched straight back into the church and somehow, through luck, well placed shots and crits and vats, I was able to take out the last of the knights with only 15 rounds left. 
The silver lining of all of this was that I got just enough XP to level up and get the second rank of the Cap Collector perk, which greatly reduces the amount of money of the Gamma Gun rounds. This is important because the Brotherhood killing doesn't stop here, and it was time to head to the police station to wipe out more Brotherhood as well as steal the Vertibird there. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but this pretty much went the exact same as the fight in the church. I prepared by buying a bunch of ammo, arrived at the police station, used all of said ammo, had to leave to wait and get more ammo, then returned and dealt with the last of the Brotherhood before me, Deacon and Twitchy Tom flew the Vertibird up to the Prudwin. When we get there, Deacon tells me he got me a Brotherhood uniform so that I can sneak on and place the charges. Now, I assumed because I was already wearing Brotherhood painted power armor that they wouldn't suspect me. But no, apparently only the orange Brotherhood uniform works, so I loaded back and snuck aboard with that instead. First attempt doesn't go so well as I lack the charisma to persuade, so when I walk past someone important, they pretty much immediately turn hostile, and so I have to sprint through and attach the charges. I actually managed to do it and survive, but as I go to leave, I get insta-killed every time I go through this door by maxing and his Gatlin laser, so once again, I load back to when we initially boarded and came up with a new strategy. The only people who seem to be able to suspect you are named Brotherhood members, so as long as I stay away from them, I should be okay. I take a slightly longer route by going around the back and up that way to avoid everyone, and then quickly set all the charges without being spotted, and then make my way back to Deacon and Tom. Obviously, not wanting to leave all of my loot and power armor behind, I grabbed it all and hopped back in the suit, which of course made everybody hostile. Considering the sheer number of lasers here, it is a wonder the vertebrate didn't just get atomized. With that though, we somehow escape, destroy the Brotherhood, I get an achievement, and now it's time for the final assault on the Institute. There isn't a whole lot to say here, as it's exactly the same as it would be if I sided with the Brotherhood or the Minutemen. The only difference being, this time I still have access to the Institute, so I just teleport in and help Z1 take out everyone near the teleporter and then call in Thomas and friends. I actually kill a majority of the synths and scientists myself, as by this point I've got enough damage increasing perks from my build that they all go down in one or two shots. Well, everything except for the gorillas. They seem to have an oddly high radiation resistance. In the reactor room, me and a few railroad agents destroy all the synths, I then slap the pulse detonator on the reactor, and for some reason Desdemona isn't here, so I need to run back and find her. Luckily she wasn't too far back as I only had two rounds left by this point, one of which I used on that science Wallace I kidnapped earlier before getting teleported out. I then pressed the big button, destroying the institute, and after 8 hours of stress, proved that yes, you can indeed beat Fallout 4 with only the Gamma Gun. I have no final thoughts, I am tired, let me rest. <laughs> Regardless, that's going to be the end of this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like, and if you're interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe to try to have one of these videos out every week. My name is Norbert, stay safe everyone, I'll see you all in the next video.